One. Hey guys, this is Darren Benton again with Performance Motor Coaches. We are here today at the Middlebury Lakes Campground, aka the Show Hauler parking lot, on a unit we just finished up. This unit will be on display at the Hershey RV Show. It's not for sale at the Hershey RV Show, but it'll be on display. Uh, I believe that starts on the 11th, September 11th. It'll be there for about a week. Go by and see Bob there from Show Hauler. He will be there for the duration of the show, and I'll probably pop my head in a few times. But uh, as of now, this coach is available uh, to be purchased. It would have to be purchased after the show back in Texas. So just for anybody that kind of wants to know that information, I uh, don't like to talk about prices, MSRP, and everything like that. Just more content. So this particular floor plan is a floor plan we've done on numerous occasions. Uh, I call it the opposing seating, opposing slide floor plan, bath and a half. So uh, we changed it up a little bit in that we did a bunk over so it would be more conducive to a family. We also did a fold over couch inside so you could sleep a fair amount of people inside but it is not a traditional bunk house unit like we do a lot of times. So let's kind of go ahead and jump into the unit itself. So 2023, I guess the model number is a 35K TSL really doesn't mean too much to me it's they have so many varying floor plans and for people that have followed the show hauler everything is pretty much one off so even though they do some floor plans that carry into other dealers other customers everything is pretty much one off so you won't see this exact setup anywhere again the color combination could be could be duplicated but everything's pretty much a one-off unit so it's built on a 2023 Freightliner Cascadia this is the 126 so it's the longer hood that allows for the 600 horsepower Detroit. It's the DD16, so the 15.6 liter Detroit diesel. It is matched or mated to the Detroit transmission, the 12 speed DT12 transmission, which is kind of my favorite power combination. Uh, so, in the event it doesn't sell uh, anytime soon, I'll make it on down the highway because it, it, it is a joy to drive this power combination. Uh, the idea back behind more gears is uh, just always being in your power band. We could talk 20-30 minutes just strictly about the engine transmission. One thing that is unique about Show Hauler, uh, they are a fully welded steel frame uh, with sheet metal that then covers it. So this does have spray foam insulation which is getting to be very difficult to get in the market. Uh, Show Hauler has it as an option. I don't foresee it going away anytime soon. The conversion on this is roughly 35 foot. Your cab is 126 inches, so just shy or just a little over that 10 foot. So we're at a little over 45 foot bumper to bumper, including the fiberglass cap itself. We did quite a few upgrades on the exterior to kind of make it stand out. Uh, we didn't have enough time to get it painted to get to that show for display. So I just did, we did the blackout package, so the American Racing Wheels. This is only nine inch American Racing Wheel you can get on this. So for people that have inquired about uh, varying other wheels. To do a 9 inch, to do the 18,000 pound front, you'll have to go with that exact wheel right there. There are some variations of that wheel, but essentially there's not all kinds of different combinations there. This does have all the side swing baggage doors. They are fully locking as well, and there is a factory key fob for the Cascadia. So pretty nice setup. You can lock everything from a little key fob, and there's a keypad on the side of the door just for your conversion itself. We went with all framed glass, reason being uh, just for airflow. Uh, you, you can slide those open. We've had a lot of issues with the frameless glass. I love the way the frameless glass looks. However, reliability, just going back to old school, just a framed piece. Uh, they actually issued several recalls on the frameless about them coming apart. I don't know if anybody has gotten a piece of glass to the windshield, but that's the reason why we've kind of shifted back towards the framed windows just for safety reliability as well. We didn't go wild and crazy as far as the batteries. We just did 400 amp hour lithiums. Uh, we could easily stack more batteries in there because the inverter is now configured for the lithium. It does have the Victron shunt uh, and it also has the, uh, the lithium compatible uh, battery isolator. It'd be really easy to upgrade this system. Uh, currently just has 400, uh, four 100 uh, watt solar panels up top uh, and that is just the standard go power. But all that stuff can be upgraded. 3000 watt magnum power inverter. So that's your nice clean power bay right there. We did get them to finally start mounting the inverters 
on the side, uh, not the top of the compartment, but at least it's on the side to give you a little bit more storage space there. One thing that I really like about Show Hauler, um, they're just simple. There's a lot of simple pieces to that. Uh, we don't really get too many warranty phone calls from people with show haulers. So such as this, just as simple as this. So this generator is placed between your axles and the generator will stay much cleaner than going right back behind the axle, picking up all that dirt when you drive down the road. Uh, not a really big deal uh, for a lot of environments, but if you're out west or if you're raining or any kind of snow or sleet. So right over here we do have a, uh, this is kind of a combo wet bay right here. Uh, that's just a 72 gallon waste tank for the half bath and for the galley itself. So just all storage up and down the side. There's a few spots for storage and then uh, it is standard to have all the storage compartments uh, bed lined. A true tandem rear axle, it's not like a diesel pusher in that uh, would have a uh, any kind of tag axle itself. So uh, you can lock your front axle left to right and then you can actually lock the back axle in as well. So uh, great for any kind of, uh, you know, snowy environments, anything, uh, you know, if you were to uh, be drop, you know, driving through a little bit of sand or muck, you could easily lock all those, uh, the, all the rear axles in, you don't have to worry about getting stuck. Electrical bay right there, the transfer switch is located on the back. And then I guess this is the true wet bay. So you have 72 gallon gray, 72 gallon black. Uh, and this from basically the rear bath right here. And then you can uh, connect your, uh, your fresh water in there as well. This does have the fiberglass rear cap that we mentioned earlier. You can build it without a fiberglass cap and just do a metal back, uh, like for specialty applications or somebody that wants to just uh, have a little bit shorter coach overall length, that'll add about 10 inches overall length, the cap itself, but it's a nice look, just kind of a nice finished look itself. 40,000 pound hitch, that, that assembly is rated at 30,000 pounds right there. We generally do a two inch receiver welded, welded below to be able to flat tow a car or be able to put a two inch ball, but your upper assembly is rated at 30,000 pounds. Nice aluminum ladder. They used to use steel. We were having some issues, a little bit of rust on the back side of those, so they went to aluminum. I uh, rated it 250 pounds. I can assure you can put a lot more uh, weight on that than 250 pounds. So it does have the dual awnings on this side and the fake cans over there. We like to do that just to kind of hide all of the air conditioners, your satellite dish up on top there. So these are two live awnings right here and then fake cans on the other side. So this 50,000 BTU hydronic heater, uh, this is from ITR, they're based out of the Northwest. They do a lot of marine applications. Uh, really good luck with those guys, really great customer service as well. Uh, the nice thing also about this is if you do screw up and do freeze this, it's about a $600 problem versus about a $10,000 problem with an aqua hot. The customer service is amazing. Um, you know, we still see a lot of the aqua hots, uh, but this is by far my, kind of my favorite unit as far as a hydronic heater. More storage right there. They don't put air vents on their compartments because they want to get them sealed. The problem with that is they're so well sealed whenever you go to slam them, it, you know, you have all that air pressure inside. So just a simple little outdoor cooler right there. And then this is something I like to do periodically and that's a combined storage compartment. So if you had a longer, you know, you know, say like a long ladder, you could actually go all the way through. There's two individual doors, but you can see here, it opens up all the way through, and then you just have some more storage out in front of it. We did all of the black accessories from Freightliner. Uh, we do still have all the chrome stuff, but we've taken bedline, the steps there, and then just that's all black plastic that comes from uh, freight line. So it's pretty easy to swap. We should have a grill guard. It didn't arrive this week. We hopefully it'll arrive next week. Pretty cool looking grill guard to go up on the front. Outdoor TV. So 43 inch Samsung Smart. It does have a little JBL sound bar here and then there is a little USB charger inside there. Let me go ahead and roll these awnings out. And 
and do, does have some LED strips there. I'm going to turn all the exterior stuff on. So a fair amount of security lights on the outside, of course, in addition to the uh, LED light strip on the awnings themselves. Cool look whether they're closed or whether they are in the out position. It is a dual stage awning, so it comes out and downwards. Which, for the overall height of the coach, it helps out immensely getting that angle down a little bit to give you some more shade. So we'll go ahead and jump inside real quick. All tiled floor, tiled entry, and it does have heated tile floors as well. We've not done any kind of really clean up on it. We were just frankly trying to get it all, all the exterior stuff on. We went ahead and changed all of the hardware as well. I'll kind of jump up here. So I'll kind of show you my idea. We've done these this floor plan with the same couch with the televator. The problem is it gets extremely tight. Now you can do a jackknife couch uh, that doesn't have the spacing back behind it, but if you want a full flip over couch for additional seating, that's the reason why we stuck the, uh, there's a few lights that aren't on. That's the reason why we stuck the TV against the wall. That's a 50, uh, I think we can probably get a 60 inch TV. So uh, looks like I'll be getting a TV, an extra TV for the house, pull that off and put a little bit larger TV just to kind of take up the entire area. Uh, because the shortage is in the RV, RV industry and because of uh, a lot of manufacturers doing bulk, uh, bulk manufacturing and bulk buying, we talked about doing some other type of strip windows. Shoreholder just simply doesn't buy a thousand windows at a time. So, you know, if we can come up with something in the future to be able to do some additional windows in this area, we'll try to come up with something. It's just so incredibly difficult. Most manufacturers force you to buy 100 or 200 windows at a time, and that would just be a unique kind of a one-off piece right there. So I guess worst case scenario, do display something outside on your TV to kind of give you that overall feel. We did really big picture windows on the other side as well. We didn't do any overhead cabinets there. So you could potentially even do the same deal over here with um, big picture window without any overhead cabinet. And I'm not turned hardly any of the lights on, I apologize does have the bunk over. So this is a 54 inch bunk over right here. So pretty close to a queen size. Queen size is about 60 inches. So two people that really liked each other or easily two kids up there. Did the cabinets on one side, window on the other. The reason why I do the cabinets just to maximize the space. And that also gives you a full 80 inch length. So it's easier to find sheets. Big cab cut out right here. So kind of my favorite setup on the Cascadia. And this is the only cab that you can do this big cut out on. So for somebody that needs the sleeping but doesn't want a really small opening, this is a great setup right here to be able to have the much larger opening but still have that bunk over. One thing that is a big difference about the way show haulers are built with all that welded steel versus some other manufacturers using a lot of wood products, this guy is much, much quieter. You hardly have any movement to the shell itself, so uh, it's very rigid and you don't get the wind noise that you do get with some other manufacturers because of the way it's built itself. Factory cab seats right here. Um, oddly enough, we picked this uh, ultra leather and we couldn't get the cab seats uh, matched up, so we just left them black. If it was a big deal, we could probably come up with something after the fact, but I think everything kind of complements each other inside, even though those are black. Did the minimizer floor liners there, kind of a, me being a neat freak, I like to do those molded floor liners inside uh, the cab area there. So I'm going to go ahead and run all the slide outs out. Show haulers use a very simple lift co slide since their, since their inception and really just don't have issues from there. That's the reason why they continue to use them and I don't see them going away anytime soon. There's so many other manufacturers. There's a major company that's bought most of the RV components uh, manufacturers in the area and just the quality has really gone down. Liftco is still still very simple, uh, very small company, and so they just really don't break. Aesthetically, I don't like the arms on the inside and outside of the slide, but that is a part of what makes those slides so robust. So we do have plumbing on this slide, so it's only 18 inches in depth. 
and then we have 32 inches in depth on the other side because there's no plumbing inside the slide. So you can see once you get this thing opened up, there's a lot of room inside here. All maple cabinetry. So this is just a uh, just a light maple uh, with just a natural stain, no no stain, just uh, just a clear to it. The reason why the colors were selected for this, the brown Hershey, the Hershey RV show. So unfortunately, I wasn't smart enough to pick that up the first time I came in here. Uh, Bob at Show Hauler picked most of the colors on it, uh, so it turned out great. Uh, you know, the. The unique thing about this is, you know, with so many tr trending colors out there, there's so many things that are going gray that are now going uh, tans and brown. So, kind of happy to have this a little bit different setup. I did quartz countertops, and uh, not seen this particular quartz uh, in the done in any kind of RV. That's the nice thing about uh, show hauler. You can do you can do quartz. You can do granite, you can do Corian. Uh, what I like is you know, something a little bit harder than the standard Corian. The standard Corian is very, very soft and so it scratches with relative ease. We'll kind of flip flop around here. Fixed on it because of the overall weight. Theater seats, all villa furniture, which is a higher end manufacturer for RV furniture. Central fridge, or just a regular residential fridge. Half bath over here. And it does have the Firefly operating system. There again, that's another thing that's pretty unique about Shaw. They won't bring everything inside the Firefly just for overall reliability. They're still going to do old school thermostats. These can be upgraded to a Wi-Fi thermostat, uh, but you know their their fear is if the system goes down, we can't get the slides in, we can't operate our our uh, generator, we can't operate our heating and air conditioning. So all that stuff is separate from the Firefly system. So plop in here, pretty good, a fair amount of room here, deep cabinets. There again, a lot of the other half baths on the market don't have nearly this much room. Very simple electrical. What I like is it's right at eye level, so it's easy to be able to do any kind of deviation. Uh, it's very simple. So everything that's on these panels right here operates off a shore and generator, and then everything that operates off your power inverter is right over here. If you need to change that up or if you need to be able to do like a dual inverter or additional items on your inverter, everything is really close here to be able to take and change any of that up after the fact. Stacked washer dryer right here. We do have a pantry right here. Slide out, it's kind of a lighter area here. All adjustable shelves above that pantry. It does have a central back. Let me open that back up. I apologize. Central back right down there. And then that all these do slide in and out. And that's something that, you know, because we've done this floor plan, we've done this pantry in several different ways. You know, whether it's a pull out pantry, whether you just do shelves, uh, there's a lot of different potentials you can actually do here because of the level of customization. So big king size master bed right here. It is 80 inches in length and 72 uh, width. So you can use just standard king size bedding here. You do have a pad overhead to be able to drop all your lights, you know, turn the lights on and off while you're in bed and you can actually run, start and stop your generator as well. So it makes it pretty handy. Rather than having to look on the side, you look straight up and then you can actually uh, turn that, turn the, the backlit portion of that on or off at night. So you just hit one button, it'll turn back on and if you, you want to turn that off uh, so it's not blasting you overnight, it's pretty easy to turn it on and off. That is the egress window there. Uh, there's very there's variations you can do. So we wanted a larger TV and a lar larger uh, cabinet here uh, or closet area. So we brought the TV outwards, and then you do have each side there it goes back. I don't know if you can catch this, but it goes back to about right here. So they're pretty darn deep. Uh, it doesn't go all the way across because they run some of the electrical right back behind the TV in a really narrow corridor. Underneath there is a pocket for satellite receiver or you know if you had Apple TV or anything like that to be able to take and upgrade that. Of course the TVs are smart so it's kind of a thing of the past. But lots of storage all the way underneath. Drawers down low then cabinet doors there. Underneath the bed itself we've got two 75 gallon fresh water tanks so a fair amount of uh, fresh water to be able to use if you're doing a lot of boondocking as well. One thing 
these are uh, there's actually a dual dual zone heated tile floors I'd like that there's no integration with the Firefly so that way I can go through and actually set up a schedule on these so I can turn those heated tile floors on you know have them come on say at four or five o'clock in the morning may you know, warm up to about 80 degrees uh, rather than having to rely on a Firefly system that's just on or off essentially come back in the back bath here just did a regular manual flushing toilet right here. That's another thing because of the placement of your gray water, black water tanks. We try to land them on top of a gray water or a black water tank. So just one less thing to potentially break here. There again, lots of room here. The cabinets here, um, there's an access panel right here to be able to go on either side of this cabinet. So we really tried to maximize every single square inch of the storage here with cabinets stacked on top of each other and such. Nice tile shower here. Take and flop this around. Because of all the plumbing is above the floor instead of down in the floor, you'll you'll notice the showers are always a little bit taller and show all the most other manufacturers. So polished tile uh, shower just here just to kind of beat off the water a little bit better. We did do two little shower inserts right there for people that seem to have lots of hair care products. Uh, Nice setup right here to be able to accommodate, um, you know, whether you have kids, you know, a lot of kids, or whether you have some really curly, good curly hair. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, my, my camera person has really curly hair, so if you don't know. Uh, no skylight above here. It's nice and cool. Uh, if this was a skylight in here, it would be just like the cab. It'd be a hot area here, hot area there, but if you want a skylight, we'll build up the skylight. Uh, it does have just regular max air, so I recommend always running those when you're taking a nice hot shower. Pop this back so I don't forget. Tip for the day, always hear the click. We just did a single ceiling fan here. Didn't do a ceiling fan up front. The Max Airs move a fair amount of air, so just kind of matter of preference. I like a little bit more air movement while I'm sleeping, so that's the reason why we do a lot of the ceiling fans at night. But you know, everything is is totally cut customizable in that you can do variations of floor plan, variation of cabinets. You know, you could build this particular setup right here with a, you know, a complete uh, office. You could build it with a fireplace. You could do so many different things. So that's kind of level that show hauler does that most manufacturers don't. And, and as time progresses, you'll see less and less than that from other manufacturers themselves. So always appreciate you guys watching the videos, going through the entire videos with us. Uh, make sure you guys come, if you're anywhere in the Northeast, go check this unit out at the Hershey RV Show. Go by and see Bob and give Bob a hard time, and I should be around there at some point in time. But uh, make sure you guys keep on coming back. Make sure you guys like, tag, and subscribe.